Hey everybody, this is David, and today I'm going to be talking about The Flash, Episode 9, The Man in the Yellow Suit. First of all, I'm going to say this was an awesome episode. I really enjoyed it a lot. I'm going to say that the first half of the episode was building up a bit so at the at the start i was kind of i was hoping they would kind of rush it a little bit more but as soon as the reverse flash and him duke it out at the the football stadium that's where i feel the episode really started to pick up so let's get down to what was going on with some of the characters first we have caitlin and cisco going out looking for um firestorm uh caitlin's boyfriend and you know she found out he's alive today and and he has powers that can turn him into fire is he good is he bad he looks a little messed up but at the end of the episode we found out him hey, maybe he is good after all you know because he kind of saved the flash there so I was I was really enjoying what was going on there. At first I, I wasn't like I didn't care about it at first. But then seeing Caitlin's story and, and hearing more about her and and remembering how she lost her, him. Um that's that's what started getting me back into it. So yeah, I really enjoyed a lot of the stuff. That was going on there. I'm kind of mad though that you know Dr. Wells was kind of nice to her though, where you know Cisco did a mistake uh, not too long ago and he was kind of harsh on Cisco. I thought that was kind of like, what's up with that man? But um, all that aside, I, I I think their story, her story was uh, really well done in this episode. I, I enjoyed it. Um, but the good stuff is between the Flash, and I'm still gonna hold that off because I want to get to the whole Iris storyline with Eddie. You know, now they want to move in together. Eddie wants to take the next step into their relationship to the next level, and okay, that's that's cool. Um, I still feel bad for Barry, but um, because man, he actually got the guts to go to iris and let her know how she feels this is what we wanted since day one and i'm glad the writers didn't wait too long to actually get that going i'm glad he got that out there so now iris knows that uh barry has feelings for her i think that's really good so hopefully you know hopefully the friend zoning thing will be a little bit different in the next half of the series. I'm I'm really hoping Barry and Iris get hitched because I'm I'm tired of the teen drama romance. You know that oh the girl of my dreams is with someone else. I, I don't care about that stuff too much. I want to see them get hitched. I want to see Iris be useful, helping the Flash and all that. You know that's what I want to see. So, but for now I'm gonna accept it and I I at least he's taking. A step there he's taking a step in the right direction by letting iris know how he feels and then we also got some fatherly you know love advice and all that and uh yeah it was great seeing barry you know talk to his father at the prison and then we got to see him talk you know have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with his uh adoptive father you know joe uh i thought those were some great scenes there also, the guest in the episode, we got to see Amanda Pays return as Dr. Tina McGee. And for those of you that don't know, <laughs> Amanda Pays played Tina McGee in the 90s Flash series where John Wesley Ship uh, also starred in as Barry Allen. So... I, I was kind of bummed out that they didn't share a scene together because, I you know, I, I mean, what fan wouldn't want to see them, you know, reunite? And I'll admit, I wasn't too big of a fan of that 90s Flash TV series. I own it on DVD, but um, I the series is okay to me. I haven't even seen every episode yet. I, I've seen some episodes here and there that I decided to pick out that I thought sounded interesting. But uh, for the most part, yeah. But... I, 
when stuff like this happens, it's like when Christopher Reeve guest starred on Smallville, you know? It's such a cool moment when the original guy who played it, even if you didn't watch it, you know he played that role before, and you want them to, like, share the moment with the new actor, and which is what they did. They shared the moment with Grant Gustin. And, um, but it would have been cool to see, like, at least one scene with Dr. Tina McGee uh, talking to Barry's father, I think, to kind of have that reunite, you know, on screen, reunited on screen. I, I thought that would be pretty cool, but it didn't happen, and no big deal. It, it, there was no reason for it to happen anyways, um, but it was, it, it would have still been, you know, a nice thing for the fans, but don't force it if it's, if it's not that time yet, right? And then let's get down to the most important thing about the episode. The Reverse Flash. And this guy is bad news. Man. First, we got to see them duke it out at the football stadium, which was pretty damn cool. But the thing that really made this episode was the ending there. The last half hour was freaking amazing, especially when they trapped the Reverse Flash. Or so they thought they revert, uh, they uh, captured him. Because at the very end of the episode, we find out Dr. Wells is the reverse Flash. I was, I was jaw dropped. Literally. I, was, I had my jaw dropped for like at least five minutes. And <laughs> I didn't even respond to the other people that were in the room with me <laughs> watching... <laughs> The episode with me so it was it, it, oh, man it was such because i wasn't expecting it i i had myself convinced till the end of the episode it's gonna be eddie even if it's eddie from the future even when reverse flash was in that you know prison um uh, and we saw eddie and dr wells there so it did have me thinking huh so who could this be who like if they're there then that must be someone either we don't know, and my brother mentioned, what if it's Eddie from the future? And then that got me thinking, yeah, that's who it has to be. It has to be Eddie from the future. And then at the end of the episode, we find out it's Dr. Wells this entire time. So how did he do that, man? That's that's the thing that's driving me insane. It's like, so how did he, you know, play two roles at the same time? Did he have a remote device that, you know, controlled the suit? That while well, and have himself beat himself up, or it, was he so fast that he was playing two roles at the same time? It's so hard to know now. I mean, this was literally a great episode. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up right now because <laughs> there's not much more I can say. I, I think I said everything I really wanted to say about this episode. I really like the Christmas theme. Throughout the episode, that was really nice. Starting it with Christmas music, ending it with Christmas music. The tease at the end, you know, with Wells revealing that he's the reverse Flash. Everything. For sure, the last half hour. The last half of the episode was where it really got good. The first half was alright, but you can tell they were just building things up for things to happen. And then once things happened, it really got good. So, with that being said, I'm going to have to give this a 9 out of 10 um, for all the, the reasons mentioned. Um, if the first half was a lot more better and tighter, um, I would have given this a 10 because that ending deserves a 10. Uh, but uh, because I wasn't... It, the first... The beginning didn't really get me fully excited. Um... It took its time. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I still really enjoy the episode. 9 out of 10 is really good, so I was really proud of it. And damn, Merry Christmas. Because, yes, Merry Christmas, Dr. Wells, because this was a fantastic ending for you to tease us with until next year when we get back, I guess, right? In January or February. It's going to be a, a good long wait, man. Ugh. But uh, I can't wait. This is... This is great so far, guys. I'm really enjoying The Flash. Um, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying The Flash a lot more. I knew I was going to enjoy The Flash. Ever since I f saw that first five-minute trailer 
I knew right away The Flash is going to be one of my new sh favorite shows this fall. And uh, man, I also have to give props to Grant Gustin, who had a terrific performance in today's episode. That scene between him and his father at the prison, man, like an actor who can cry like that on, on screen and make it believable that he's like hurt and in pain, you know, it takes a lot uh, to get into that emotional state as an actor and it just impressed me right there and I think man this is why Grant Gustin and Stephen Amell need a Flash and Green Arrow movies they need to be connected to the DC Cinematic Universe this is why I've been hoping for it because I think these two shows have been doing things great and you know Gotham has been pretty good too I think I know a lot of people say they they have their issues with Gotham, but I think it's all right. Uh, Constantine has been pretty good. Um, to me, it's the weakest of the four, but you know all of them are leagues better than Agents of Shield, and that one is connected to the films. Um, but you know DC, when it comes to television, I have to admit they they do more things right so far than um, Marvel has been doing. I have to wait for the Netflix series, I guess. And Agent Carter looks pretty good. Uh, so maybe Marvel will have some. I'm only judging them on one show, really. So um, whatever. The more great superhero shows, the better. I, I, You know, this is a great time to be a superhero fan. And this episode of The Flash is proof of that. I think The Flash is, is definitely one of the greats right now so uh if you're not watching arrow or flash what the hell are you doing but i i guess if you're watching this review you for sure watch the flash so with that that being said guys have a merry christmas um if you watch my arrow reviews then i guess i'll see you tomorrow and then i'll wish you another merry christmas happy holidays and all that so until next year for the flash take care